So I'm here to share a resource with you and an idea. It's actually not my idea. It's not, I wish it was, because it's, I find, brilliant. And I came across this idea, like many people do these days, while surfing the internet. And I was actually a student in a psychology course not long ago. And my professor, his lecturing was not so great because his mother had just passed away, and it was really interfering with his lectures. You could, it was very noticeable. So I, I wasn't getting nearly as much of the course as I could. So I went online in search of more. And what I came across was a course in psychology offered by MIT. And there was lecture notes, the syllabus, audio recordings from a very amazing professor. And it was actually great because he was talking about the exact stuff I was learning in my class earlier that day. So it was incredible that, to see that the entire course from the first class to the last was online. So, you know, with the syllabus and lecture notes and everything. So I was intrigued, you know, did, did I, how did I come to this class? Was I, uh, you know, accidentally going in without having the login for information? Because I know that stuff's all available at my school through Moodle. But here it is, all online there for free. So I explored this site some more. I saw that there wasn't just this one psychology class, but they actually had 1,800 classes online for free for anyone to access. And that means you. You could go online and, and look at all these great courses, whether it's in you know, chemistry or physics or biology, whatever your interest is. There's stuff for everybody. So it, it's really amazing. And, and after that, I started to talk to some friends about it. I was talking on, with my sister, who's in, in BC, and I said, so Nicole, did you hear of this? Like, what do you make of this? I find this amazing. Like, what do you think? And she's like, oh, yeah, actually, you know what? I'm taking this. Like, I'm, I'm looking at this course, like virtually auditing this course through a, a back door of an MIT website. And I was like, no, it, it's not a back door. They're actually encouraging you to go on. <laughs> and it, yeah, it's, they, they want it there for, for you to do exactly what you're doing. So it's not an accident. And then I to told another friend, uh, a friend who's a Concordia engineering student, Tamara. And she was like, really? OK. So she went online. And, and went to a, an engineering course and found an excellent set of problem sets, she, she told me later, that really helped her in an engineering course she was taking, where her professor was, was great, but she just wasn't grasp, grasping some concepts. So she could go on and actually get like a really solid understanding of what do, she was doing because of open courseware. So there's, then I started reading more, and there's tons of these great cases that you could see right on the MIT OpenCourseWare website. For instance, this one that really moved me. I, I heard this story of Megan Brewster. Megan Brewster, she recently, well, not recently, this is a while ago now, but she graduated from the University of Washington with a, a Bachelor of Science and went down to Guatemala to volunteer. So she's in Guatemala volunte volunteering, and immediately she found she wanted something um, to develop or to help develop a recycling program. And there wasn't actually any materials, no libraries, nothing like that around. So she didn't have her textbooks with her. So she goes online, and using OpenCourseWare, she was actually able to develop the protocol to de develop a recycling program in this small remote town in Guatemala, which was really amazing. And here you can see the, uh, the URLs to the OpenCourseWare and the OpenCourseWare Consortium website. So, I encourage you to visit these for sure. And there's not just uh, benefits for self-learners and, and students like that. There's a lot of benefits for students where you could actually, well, the, the schools that are engaging in openly publishing this material, what it's allowed the, the students to do that are gonna, going to go there, it's helped them plan their course of studies. So if you want to be able to see what you're going to study, you could actually look into that class before you go into it. And then when you're in that class, you're, you're more prepared because you know exactly what you're in for. And then after you take the class, you could actually look back at it. You know, how many of us go to school and then, like even classes from my first year, there's some concepts that I'm slowly losing a touch with. But if I could go back and actually look at what I did in those classes, it would be such a great refresher. So there's that. There's also, you could get different perspectives from profs, just as it happened with Tamara. Maybe her prof wasn't explaining something in a good way. She could get another perspective from another professor and then get better help with grasping that concept. So it's great for schools because they get uh, more prepared students. And 
They could also potentially get better students because it's sort of working as a marketing tool for the schools. You have students that are able to look at what the school is actually offering, and if you have a really great program in whatever subject, and you're a student that's into that program, and you see, wow, this program is great, they, they teach it in a way I understand, you're gonna go to that school. So it's really great if the schools are doing that for the school to attract but brightest and best students that they can. And it's also great for teachers, actually, as well, because what you're having is more engaged students who are gonna be more successful. And you're also contributing to your academic discipline. If you're publishing online your best teaching resources, a professor at another school who's teaching the similar subject but, subject but maybe doesn't have as good teaching skills, they could use your material. So you're really contributing to your discipline as well. And you're also having more time in the class to talk with your students and have them ask questions and engage in the material in the class time because the students could actually use that material that's online as preparation for class. So, yes, as a professor, you might, uh, I mean, I'm sure you would actually have a very, some very logical objections to initially putting this stuff online. Say, well, if I put my stuff online, if I put video lectures online, my students just won't come to class. But what they've actually found is that it's actually great preparation for the class, and when the students are there, they could interact with you more. Because that's what you're there for. The professor's there to teach. You're, you're not just there to be a, uh, you know, talk, and that's it. It's great if a student could ask questions, and if you have lectures online beforehand, there's more time to do that. And it's also great, or, or another objection, is that professors have to spend so much time preparing these materials for public consumption. Because if it's gonna be seen by tons and tons of people, you know, you wanna make sure it's the best, and that's gonna take a lot of time. But that should really be seen as a benefit, because if you are putting more and more time to make really great teaching materials, that's a good thing. <laughs> so you also have the, the issue of intellectual property. Of a, if, if the professor's reluctant, they, they could say, well, you know, if, if I put this stuff online, I'm giving up my intellectual property. But that's actually not the case at all, what you're, because you would be releasing it through an open license. So, would, for instance, a Creative common, like, Commons license, where you're saying, look, this is my intellectual property, but I encourage you to use it and remix it and adapt it into your teaching environment or use it as an independent learner or a student so long as you attribute uh, my intellectual property. So, so link back to me. And then what that does is actually increases attraction to your for-profit publications as a, as a professor. So from here I would say, for all the people in the room, use this stuff and use it to get smarter. If you're a, a company owner, link it on your HR website for your employees. You know, a computer programming company, there is amazing computer science courses. There's some programs for everything. That, you know, that from here, you know, it started 10 years ago. Now there's 13,000 courses in their entirety online, more than 240 institutions worldwide. There's 800 translations of the work, 250 copies, um, sent to remote areas that are not uh, great with the internet. So they've sent in copies to a lot of places, even in sub-Saharan Africa. So from here, I would say, for the students, use it. And for professors, be one of those um, people joining that group of the crazy people dancing. <laughs> you know, get, get into that and, and follow these great leaders who have done an excellent job, I think, leading in this incredible movement. So I just wanted to share that with you.